Well, hello and welcome to Movement Church Online. Thank you for being with us for Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas to you, if case no one has said that to you yet. Merry Christmas. We're so glad that you guys are here with us today. Uh, as we celebrate Christmas Eve from wherever you are from to our place, we're so glad that you guys are here celebrating Christmas with us. Today, we've got a great service for you here at Movement Church Online for Christmas. Uh, we've, we're going to read the Christmas story. We're going to sing some songs of, of worship here at Christmas. And I've got a great message for you that's going to refocus us on what God God ultimately did at Christmas. And so today we're going to dive right in with reading the beginning of the Christmas story. Luke's gospel tells us this, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. In Matthew's Gospel, it records this. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus.
reading again from Luke's Gospel. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And in Matthew's gospel, he records this. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
Well, I want to start tonight by telling you about one of my favorite Christmas memories when I was growing up. Truly one of the craziest things I remember ever happening around Christmas, or maybe even ever happening. Um, our family was headed out to the wilderness in the woods to get the Weiss family Christmas tree. I must have been seven or eight years old. Uh, we were driving out to the country in our station wagon when all of a sudden, this old beat-up turquoise truck flew up out of nowhere and then rode on our tail in a way that was really menacing out on this old highway road. So my dad motioned for them to pass and slow down to let them get around easily. And that's when things started to go crazy. After they got past us, they started hitting the brakes hard like they were trying to provoke an accident. 
Now, one thing about my dad, Clark, is he has a low tolerance for fools, okay? My mom said to just stop for a little bit so that they could go on and we wouldn't be bothered them, but my dad said no. He was going to pass them and leave them safely behind us. He even said, burn some dust here, eat my rubber. Now, that's just what my dad said. We, we passed the hillbillies in the turquoise truck, but soon they were catching up to us again, and they decided to pass us again. Now, you can imagine what my dad decided to do. He decided to pass them back again. Now, what my dad didn't realize in his blind rage was that a logging truck had, truck had come up on us out of nowhere and was also passing us. And the moment my dad pulled out to pass, somehow we perfectly aligned in a way that our 1989 Ford Taurus station wagon fit perfectly under the logging truck between the front and back wheels. It was terrifying. Now, eventually, I mean, we, so somehow my dad figured out how to stay exactly under there, but eventually my dad pulled the wheel quick to get us out, and we had a snowbank that sent us flying through the air. But luckily, in a twist of fate, our car landed in the parking lot of where we were going to get our Christmas tree from. So all in all, things worked out. Now, that's a great story, right? That is a great story. Only problem is that's not my story. That's not my story. Some of you probably caught on pretty quick. That was actually the opening scene of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. My dad's name isn't Clark. We never owned a station wagon. None of that story actually happened to my family. It's a great story. It's just not my story. And it's a sad thing when you can recognize a great story, but you're not part of it. Or when you know there's a great story, but you don't belong in it. Or it's a great story, but it's not great for you. It's a great story for someone, but it's not so great for you. It's good news for someone, but not such good news for you. It's a great story. Everyone laughs when they tell it, but you're the butt of the joke. You don't actually fit in the great story. When you, or It's a great story, but you missed out on the fun. You missed out on the adventure. And other times you have a great story that you know someone like you would never actually be a part of. You don't fit in those stories or their, those narratives of adventure or risk-taking. You can't see yourself in those stories. See, here, we, here we are together tonight on Christmas Eve as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, the arrival of our Savior. It's an amazing thing to think that God would send His Son as the Savior of the world, that the Son of God came and He lived among us, lived in our world, walked in our shoes, breathed our air, experienced our joy, our pain, our sorrow, our grief, every emotion that we ever have. And one of the things that I love about the recorded story of that first Christmas is simply this. No matter who you are, you can find you in the Christmas story. No matter who you are, you can find you in the Christmas story. And that's good news for all of us. That's good news for all of us. No matter who you are or what your life has been, you can find yourself within the story of the arrival of Jesus. We're all included in some way. And it, it, within the Christmas story, let me just tell you what you've got. You've got a young mom whose life has been turned upside down by this pregnancy and the arrival of this newborn baby. I mean, like, that, that for all the moms out there, any mom, any woman who's ever been pregnant and had a child, you know that's your story. You've got a husband and dad who has a whole bunch of questions about what is going on with this baby and his new wife. Everyone who's, every guy who's ever been a dad and a husband, you know you've got some questions about your wife, you've got some questions of what's going on with the kid, like it, it, it's just a part of it. You've got shepherds, these teenage boys and girls who are poor and uneducated and unclean and probably irreligious because they've been told that they are unclean and they're invited as the first people outside of the family to see and meet the newborn Savior of the world. We have the wise men who came from afar, these foreigners bearing precious gifts based on whatever it was they saw in the starry sky that led them to believe that a king had been born. They're foreigners. They, they're, they're far away from, the, from what's ha the story. They, they, they don't necessarily belong in the story. They've got everything together. They're wise. They're, they're majestic. They've got great gifts. They've got a lot of things together, but they've also got some big questions. We have King Herod, who is disturbed and threatened and afraid that this newborn king might just mean he will lose control. And finally, we have the angels in their dazzling clothes. And some of you wearing your Christmas best right now, the angels have got you covered. If, in, in case you've got nothing else in the story, the angels with their dazzling clothes, you've got, they've got you covered. Their da your dazzling clothes, your dazzling hair, they've got you covered. And here's the thing. The reason it's such good news that we can all find ourselves within the Christmas story is simply this. If you can find yourself in the Christmas story, the good news of Christmas is good news for you. 
If you can find yourself in the Christmas story, which we said before, all of us can find ourselves within the Christmas story. If you can find yourself in the Christmas story, the good news of Christmas is good for you, good news for you. And that means the good news of Christmas is good news for everyone because all of us can find ourselves within the Christmas story. And if we can find ourselves within the Christmas story, if we can figure out who we are within the events of the first Christmas, we know we can know that the good news is good news for us. And what is the good news? The good news is found in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 through 23, as we read a little bit earlier. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. You want to know what the good news of Christmas is? The good news of Christmas is that God is with us that God is with us. And we know he is with us because his son, the savior of the world, came and he lived among us. He is with us now. He was with us then. He is with us now. He is with us here. He was with us today. He is with us tomorrow. He is with us always. The good news of Christmas is that God is with us, that he came to us. He is still with us. And tonight, really briefly, I want to talk to four specific people that we find in the Christmas story that may just be you tonight. The first one is simply this. If your world has been shaken, the good news of Christmas is good news for you. If your world has been shaken, God is with you. This is the story of Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph had very literally had their life turned upside down in the nine to ten months leading up to the birth of Jesus. In that time frame, they had lived through a very, 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 very unexpected pregnancy. Joseph had considered breaking off their engagement. Mary was forced to go live with her family in another town because there was so much ridicule in her hometown. Then, while being nine months pregnant, the government calls for a census that requires a long journey on donkey back, which for all of you who have ever been pregnant, doesn't that just sound terrible? It sounds awful. It sounds amazingly terrible. It's probably the understatement of the century to say this. Their world had been turned upside down. And here's the thing. Their world was turned upside down because they were following God's plan for them. Now, here's what I know. In the last year, some of you have had your world turned upside down. Maybe it was a job loss or a job transition that you didn't see coming. Maybe it was a diagnosis for someone in your family that shook things up in a really serious way. Maybe for some of you, it was exactly what we read in the story that you had a baby this year and things went a little bit difficult and things weren't as easy having the baby as you thought they were going to be. Uh, maybe it was the loss of a family member and you're grieving and you don't know when the grieving will stop. Maybe it was a big move. Maybe it was your kids in school with a different or a difficult situation in the classroom uh, for, for one reason or another. For some reason or, not, or another, this year, your life has been turned upside down. Your, your, your world has been shaken. And what you have figured out is that as that happened is that it's hard to know what's certain when your world gets shaken. Hard to know what stands when so many things seem to be falling apart. And in the middle of whatever you're going through, the Christmas story is good news for you because in the midst of your world being shaken, God is with you. God is with you. Just like he was with Joseph and he was with Mary, he will be with you when your world shakes. And his presence, it may not stop your world from shaking, but he will be your comfort and your constant while everything else is shaking. He is with you. He is the constant in the storm. He is the constant in the shaking. He is what remains still even when everything else is shaken. And that is good news. For those of us looking for something constant when everything else is shaken, our God is constant when everything else is shaken and he is with us. Second person I want to talk to is if you've ever felt like a faith outsider, the good news of Christmas is good news for you. This is the story of the shepherds. The shepherds were teenage boys and girls who were uneducated and unclean. Their profession meant that they couldn't participate in religious regulations and ceremonies. Their schedule, because they spent all of their time out with the sheep, meant even if they were considered clean, all of their time was spent with the sheep and they couldn't make it to the synagogue or to temple to participate in worship. And... They were shepherds most of the time because they weren't educated. They were, they were uneducated. They weren't educated enough to do anything else, meaning even if they were allowed to worship, they wouldn't have known what to do. They were outsiders. 
their entire life, they had been told they were unclean, unworthy, undeserving, uneducated, didn't know enough, didn't see enough, hadn't done enough, didn't, didn't, didn't do all of the right things in order to be considered part of the people of God. And here's the thing, for some of you, maybe you have felt that either this year or at some point in your life. Maybe your work schedule doesn't allow you to be at church like you want to. Maybe some of you, maybe someone told you that when you were younger that you didn't belong in church because of the way you behaved when you were young. Maybe someone made you feel bad for the things that you didn't know about the Bible or about God because, and, and you turned your back on faith altogether. And if that's you, there is some great news in the Christmas story. God is with you. God is with you. Just as if, just as the same way God showed up to these shepherds, God showed up, the first people to hear the good news of Jesus were the unclean, the uneducated, the, the people who weren't good enough for everybody else. They were good enough for God and God came close to them. God came to be close to those who felt far from him, which means if you feel far from God, God came to be close to you. There are no outsiders in God's eyes. God came to be close to you. And if you reach out to him from wherever and whoever you are, you can know him and experience his goodness and his grace and know his presence in your life right now. He is Emmanuel, God with us, even when we feel far from him. He comes close to us who are far from him. And if you feel far from him right now, you need to know that he is coming close to you, that he has come close to you to you, and he is available to us in every situation of life right now. The third group of people I want to talk to is if the thought of choosing Jesus terrifies you because you know you will lose control of your life. The good news of Christmas is good news for you. This is the story of Herod. See, the wise men and the Magi arrive in Jerusalem to Herod, who called himself the king of the Jews, asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? And Herod freaks out. Because when you're in control, when you've got power and someone shows up asking about the one who will replace you, you freak out. You freak out. For some of you, you're not a king and you're not a queen, but when you think about really truly embracing the way of Jesus, you freak out a little bit too. Because you know that there's this thing that Jesus wants called surrender. And what you really know is that surrender to Jesus means you won't fully be in control of your life anymore. You won't make all of your own decisions independently. You may not spend your money the same. You not spend your, may not spend your time the same. There may be some things that change in your family and in your household. You may not be able to control every little detail of your life the same. But here's what I know. In the hands of a loving and a strong God, that's okay. It, it scares us to death. But in the hands of a loving and strong God, that's okay. In the middle of your fear of losing control, God is with you. In the middle, that's the good news of Christmas for you. In the middle of your fear of losing control, God is with you. And tonight, I think he may just want to say to you, there is nothing to fear in trusting God because he has proven himself trustworthy. He can be trusted with your life because he is wise. He can be trusted with your life because he is loving. He can be trusted with your life because he is strong. And maybe most importantly, he can be trusted with your life because he is good. And he is with you us. And when he's with you and he's loving and he's wise and he's strong and he's good, he can be trusted in the face of your fear of losing control. He is the only one worthy of giving over control to. So if you fear giving control of your life to God, today the good news of Christmas is that God is with you and he's ready and willing and waiting for you to give control to him. And there's nothing to fear there. And the fourth people that I'd like to talk to, if you've got all the surface stuff together, but inside, but inside you're struggling, the good news of Christmas is good news for you. If you've got all the surface stuff together, but inside you're struggling, the good news of Christmas is good news for you. This is the story of the wise men, and, and stretching here a little bit, the angels with their dazzling clothes. The wise men were, had all of the outer appearances of wealth and prosperity. They even have incredible gifts, but they show up at the wrong place because they made some wrong assumptions about where kings are born and where saviors come from. And yet to them, Jesus was Emmanuel, God with them. And, and it, here's the thing, I just to some people today who may be struggling with Christmas, if you've spent a whole lot of time on Pinterest trying to make, every, make sure that your Christmas looks perfect, and you don't leave the house until you look perfect. And everything on the surface looks great. But on the inside, 
deep in your soul, there's this ache and this longing for something that lasts when the makeup comes off and when the shine wears off and when the decorations come down and when you've put on a few pounds and when you've lost a little bit of hair and when the TV you have isn't the newest TV on the market. Here's what lasts. Here's what lasts forever. God is with us. And in a world where everything fades and where everything falls, it's good news to know there is one thing that lasts and one thing that remains, that God is with us. No matter who you are and no matter where you're from and no matter what you've done and no matter what your life has looked like, the good news of Christmas is good news for you. God is with us. As John put it in his gospel, in John chapter 1, verse 14, He wrote this, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And the best news of all, He is not just with us, He is with you. He's not just with the world, He is with you. He is a personal Lord and Savior in your midst right now. You can know Him and His peace and His presence right now as you look to the Son who became flesh and made His dwelling among us. And as John wrote, He is the grace that you need. He is full of grace. He is the grace you need right now for the forgiveness of your sins that we all so desperately need, that even the best of us need on our best days. He is the grace that you need. And He is the truth that you need. He is full of grace and He is full of truth. He is the truth you need with the power to change your life. And He is with us. He is with us. Let me pray for this. Heavenly Father, today I thank you so much for Christmas. I thank you for Jesus' birth. I thank you for the arrival of a Savior. I thank you that the story, that all of our stories begin with the birth of Jesus with the one that you brought into the world to forgive us of our sins and to let us know that you are with us. God, thank you that we can know you're with us and we can wake up every day confident that you're with us because of Jesus, because Jesus lived among us, came as one of us, died for all of us, that we can know you because of Jesus. So we thank you that you are with us on our, on, our, on our best days, on the days where it looks on the surface like we have it all together, but we're struggling inside. God, we thank you that you're with us in the moments where our world is shaken. We thank you that you're with us in every single moment of life. We thank you that, that you're with us when we feel like a little bit of an outsider and we're far away from you when it comes to our faith. We thank you that you are with us no matter what we go through in life. And God, we thank you mostly today for what happened at Christmas. That at Christmas, you sent your son into the world as one of us, to live as one of us, and eventually to die for all of us so that we could know you're with us. We love you, God, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, we've had a great time together celebrating the birth of our Savior, celebrating Christmas together. Hopefully you found this time to be encouraging and hopefully it reminds you of what Jesus did when he came into this world, what God did when he sent his son to come and live among us and dwell as one of us. Hopefully you, you're reminded of the real reason for the season. Uh, today, as we, as we come to a close, I just want to let you know a few things uh, that you could do in a, to, to engage with our church beyond this, this weekend experience. First of all, we wanted to let you know that this is our final, our final service of 2022. There will be no service tomorrow, December 25th, or on, on January 1st of, of, of the new year. We will be back in person and online January 8th of 2023, but until then, we will be going dark, and we'll be, and we'll be enjoying some Sabbath time of rest after the, after the craziness of the holidays. So we want you to enjoy time with your family, enjoy time with your family over the holidays, and we'll see you on January 8th. Next, we wanted to let you know the ways that you can give. And specifically, I wanted to mention something that I have failed to mention uh, repeatedly throughout this Christmas season, but our Home for Christmas offering and our regular ties, but our Home for Christmas offering is our above and beyond giving campaign that we do every year, looking forward to and providing for a future permanent home for Movement Church. We're doing that again this year. We're trying to raise $15,000, which would put us over $50,000, which is a key mark for us to get to when it comes to banks, when it comes to lenders when it comes to being able to put some money down towards a uh, towards land or a building. And so we want to encourage you and invite you to give, uh, whether it's your regular giving or whether it's towards our Home for Christmas offering, we want to let you know the ways that you can do that. They're all on screen right now. Um, you can give uh, on, our, on our website, you can give with our Cash App, you can give with a text, or you can send a physical cash or check offering to our P.O. box that's on screen right now. But I just want to say, as we close the year, thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your obedience to God. Thank you for your generosity towards our church and your continued belief in the mission of Movement Church to create a place that, that helps people take their first step and their next step in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, and then the, the, we also wanted to let you know, if you have a need during this holiday season, we would love to hear from you. We, we would love to hear from you so we know how we can pray for you, how we can pastor you, how we can partner with you in meeting your, meeting your needs. And so we would just love to hear from you. If you have a need during this season, we want to hear from you. And so we'd encourage you to reach out. The ways you can reach out are all listed on screen. There's a phone number that you can call or text. You can shoot us a message on Facebook or you can send us an email. But however and whenever you, 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 you feel the need, we would love to hear from you so, that, so we know how we can pastor you and pray for you and be a part of meeting your need. All right, well, that's all we've got for tonight. Merry Christmas. Have a great Christmas Eve. Have a great Christmas and we'll see you in 2023.